Something huge is happening tonight. The breakdown starts now. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson, who it's a special occasion. He even wore a jacket for it. Rick, what's going on tonight? What's so special? I, I, I am over barefoot and wearing a pair of root sweatpants <laughs> underneath this fancy, fancy formal, formal Trump announcement get up. <laughs> like, why so fancy? Rick got all dressed up for Trump to announce. I know, right? I figure, I figure we're going to have Trump come out and darken our goddamn door again i might as well do it in a semi-formal kind of way I so here we you. are people i mean here we are at just a week removed from uh the midterm elections and last week we weren't sure where we would be but i can tell you right now that i never thought that we would be where we are right now which is the not only did the the, the democrats retain the senate they gained a seat and could possibly gain another one <laughs> OK, they could possibly get another one. We're in a runoff in Georgia. Um, the most egregious election deniers, democracy deniers and in the swing states across the country have all been beaten back. They've been denied. The American people said hell no in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona. We finally now know that Mark Kelly and Katie Hobbs are will be victorious there. So Carrie Lake can go kick rocks, her and her stupid filter. And it's, uh, we. I think we're like, we're, even though the Republicans are going to take the House, I mean, there was, there was a sliver of hope over the weekend um, that the Democrats could possibly keep the House, which is not somewhere I thought we would be either. Um, yeah. But it looks more likely, but it's going to be a very, very slim, slim margin. Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell are fighting for their political lives in leadership. Regardless of what you're seeing today in the headlines, Rick, um, you know this. These were procedural votes within within the, the caucuses to kind of give a nod here or there. Like McCarthy, yeah. he beat back a uh, he beat back. Uh, 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 the Andy, Andy Biggs play, yeah, yeah. The, the MAGA guy. But that's just for right now. There's seven weeks before they mm -hmm. actually have to vote in leadership. That means the entire House. And 30 plus Republicans voted against McCarthy. He still has to cobble together enough Republicans because I don't anticipate one Democrat voting for McCarthy. Um, I can't see that happening. So he has to get all those folks to vote. If I'd been the Democrats today, I would have flooded the zone for Andy Biggs. Right. Well, they don't get a say yet. This was just, know, in, know, this was just in the in the Republican caucus. So there was a lot of maneuvering going on. And you know, there's there's so much happening right now. And why do we seem like happy, even though the Republicans are going to take the House? Well, because, frankly, they were supposed to take the House, right? Historical trends Correct. were that they were most likely going to take the House. But the fact that it's only by a couple of votes is extraordinary. And the Senate is really where President Biden's agenda is most important. That's, That's right. where they nominate judges, right? Nominate and approve, well, where they approve judges, federal judges. You remember that was one of the big accomplishments by the Trump administration because Mitch McConnell, right, Mitch McConnell understands how things work and yep. was like, well, if I'm going to put up with this guy, then at least let's get what we want. And they flooded their zone with the, the judges that they wanted and got them passed through. Well, mm -hmm. you know, Biden gets to do the same thing, but this time not with a bunch of, uh, you know, lackey judges like Trump right. did. Um, but that's important. God forbid we need another Supreme Court nominee. Um, treaties, like they can stop the Republicans from doing any kind of crazy shit that they pass in the, in the House if they ever can pass anything that might be crazy. The Senate can, is where things go to die. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Senate staying with the Democrats is hugely important. Um, and watching what's going to happen over the next two years, where we will be two years from right now, I think will be rather an extraordinary ride. We'll have to demarcate this this date right now and see where we are because, folks, Donald Trump is announcing he's running for president again tonight. Rick, I mean, did he ever really stop running for president? No, he never stopped. And 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 I, you know, I I, I will say this, Tara. I've personally been in this fight since 2015. I know you were not long after that. I mean, probably within a few weeks, we started talking about this guy's unacceptable. 
Oh yeah. As soon um, as he came down the escalator. As soon as he came down the escalator, a lot of us in the in the in the in the party were just like, uh uh-uh. uh. But you know, it was three years ago, almost to this week, that the th- the serious conversation started about the Lincoln Project in the in the late fall of 2019. And we fought this fight throughout 19 and 20. And in 21, a lot of people were calling Trump the former guy. Hmm. And a lot of people were saying, oh, he'll never run again. He's disgraced, humiliated, defeated. And I kept telling him, are you kidding me? (laughs) Right. This guy absolutely will run again. He needs this mentally. He needs it psychologically. He needs it financially. There's no way he's not going to run again. And and for all the big talk today, I got a cat rolling around here. For all the big talk today, from the big money guys and from the Ron DeSantis stands and the and the various you know tough talking in Washington, we saw the same act in 2015 and 16, where the big money guys were like, "No way, I'm with Jeb Bush. He's the future." Right. And they all bent the knee. Yep. Because yep. here's the thing. Once again, I will say for the thousandth time, the Republican Party base. Is with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot of the, the the cruise line boys at National Review think that that they've that they've got an audience there. That oh, DeSantis is the future. He's certainly going to exceed that Trump fellow. No, guys, I'm sorry. Unless We're Trump great. dies or is arrested, he's, he's going called. to be the nominee. You're yeah. stuck with him. The yes. base finds him. Did you just call them the cruise line? The, what do you call them? The, the cruise. I line? said I called the National Review Cruise Line boys. Yes. Oh my God. For those who don't know why, if you read the National Review, which I used to read all the time, oh, it used yeah. to be a respectable magazine, Bill Buckley and and the in, the conservative intelligentsia over the years, but it's fallen off and became a a, a pro Trump paper and just complete a paper. I'm dating myself. Publication, right. um, but they do this annual cruise every year. They've been doing it for years, where you could go hang out with the National Review writers and conservatives. You can go on a cruise and <laughs> and sit with Newt Gingrich. Right? Like Ooh. Yes, and I am. I will admit that there was a time where I was like, "Man, I wish I could go. That'd be a cool cruise." <laughs> I was in this. You know, these were my people for a very long time. I know. I got you. <sighs> anyway, I'm sorry. That's a, that was a non sequitur, but it was just funny because I got the joke. So I wanted everybody else to get it too. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's like in The Godfather when he says, for, when, when the, 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 when uh, Saul says to the, the cop, he goes, I'm going to speak Italian to Michael for a minute. We're speaking Republican here, folks. Right. Just, That's right. right. That's right. Right. Oh, but, my God. No, Tara, I mean, look, I, I want to say one more thing before you jump onto the next subject. Yeah. Folks, the model in the beginning of the year was the Republicans had the, they looked at the economic situation and Biden's poll numbers, and they said, okay, we're going to gain a number of seats like we did in 94 or mm-hmm. 2010. Didn't even come close. Nope. Okay. Didn't Not even, even close. Didn't even crack, didn't even crack, nearly crack those numbers. So it is, it is a remarkable accomplishment that they were able to be beaten back. Um, and, first, and, time, and first time, first time since 19, there. first time since 1962 that the party in power did yeah. not, um, that, that retained this, that, I mean, retain the Senate. Like that's right. like never happens. Yeah. That, that, that's always the most volatile area and, uh, and the most consequential pickups, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I think people need to, to hear a little bit more about what LP did because we were still analyzing what was going on because the counts mm-hmm. that, you know, the election counts were still going on. Um, it's a little more clear now. There is still counting going on. And I say, keep counting and carry on because that is the democratic way. We want every never legal keep, vote counted. Counting. That's right. Until it's done. And people forget that very rarely were all votes counted on election day, tabulated and right. we had results that like never happened. People like in California, they count for weeks, actually. And in other places, like even in Florida, they're using your home state as an example. Like, oh, how come everybody can't be like Florida? We knew right away. That's because the races weren't close there. And in where the races were close, they were still counting. So they right. need to stop this. This all of a sudden now Republicans are bitching about, we, you know, we there's some kind of something going on if we're still counting votes. Like, Stop this. This is, it's ridiculous. It's just all part of this corrosive behavior towards elections, which, you know, uh, uh, right now they're escalating towards, the, they're escalating towards no early voting, no absentee voting without a, you know, excuse from a, from a doctor or a judge right. or something. Right. Um, and at that, and then they're going to say, 
And look, I believe in paper ballots, okay? I, I believe in having a countable ballot. An electric scan paper ballot is just fine. Yes. Um, but, yes. But here's the thing. They, they're, they're increasingly arguing for election day only um, and, and no, other, no, other, no other participatory methods of voting. And, and the fact of the matter is they're not far from saying, you know, going back to the, the white property owner literacy test bullshit. Well, they're, in it's, Florida, it's not far off. It's not far enough at all in Florida. <laughs> Right. I mean, he said he has an election Gestapo. We saw what what mm -hmm. what the Sanders was doing to intimidate. Right, and, they, and they did a lot of splashy, very public, very publicized arrests of African American men primarily. And and if you don't think that was a suppression ta tactic, you think again, folks. Absolutely. Well, um, I think that you know, as we talk more about what L what LP strategy was and kind of what we did, I think we need to remind people since it is Tuesday, um, what's happened in the last week. And it's last been glorious. Week. Oh my goodness. Last week of the Republican Party up right now. Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. They're, they are saying it was Trump's fault for killing the red wave. The red wave, if, if, at, at most, has become sort of a red trickle. Barely, barely, barely a red trickle. Forget the red wave, the red tide, whatever it was. It doesn't matter at this point. How is this not a red wave? Still this question about whether or not there is a red wave this evening. And it seems to be a bit tempered. And it was because these women just went crazy. So we need these ladies to get married. And it's time to fall in love and just settle down. Guys, go put a ring on it. And there's a religion of demons that loves abortion. You got to recognize the fact that this is a godless country. First, we're not a cult. Crime! 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 These are real-time crime spikes, machine manipulation. But that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe. Uh, his wife, I call her Coco Chow. We the people are requesting military step in and redo our election. They have treated him like crap. His family stand by Herschel tonight. If you can give, give. How can he keep the almighty oath to the almighty God and he keep it for them? He hasn't kept it for neither nobody. So that proves the type of man he really is. I was running against a basement candidate who didn't even campaign, didn't debate, and the people didn't vote for her. There was zero excitement, and this is ridiculous. <laughs> always said I'm not afraid of the civil war in the GOP. I lean into it. Don't even want voter ID. I need a voter ID to buy a beer. Uh, you, you need it to buy a pack of cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, to buy a jewel Get pot. You need it for that too. Open up a checking account. Yeah. Uh-oh. They've been begging to use that clip. Oh my gosh! Um, I, fucking Lindsey Graham and the 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 the, the weeping tears <laughs> over Herschel <laughs> freaking Walker. What is going? He Lindsey Graham means to lay off the sauce. I mean, really? How an insulting! I, I cannot. I cannot. I tweeted Lindsay, after that. Lindsey's like, drama. Lindsey's uh, drama in this thing has just been has just been egregious. And and look, this is a guy. Who, who has transformed himself over and over and over and over and over again in the last 10 years from one character to another. I mean, Lindsey Graham is like, is like regional dinner theater acting now. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> acting! That's giving him too much credit. There's some regional dinner theater that's actually quite good, especially in the New York City area. But no, you're right. I mean, Lindsey freaking Graham, he's been a barnacle on the ass of any alpha male he can attach to. And now he he's 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 hostless. He doesn't know what to do with himself and he's fucking falling apart. And I can't deal it. I just cannot deal with Lindsey Graham. He's so full of it. It's infuriating. And the, the, the thing great thing about Lindsey is, is tonight he's not down in Mar-a-Lago. Right. But Right. He will eventually, the oh. gravitational pull of Trump's yes. sadistic nature to him will draw him back in so Trump can humiliate him again. Of course, just like all the rest of them. Did Lindsay, 
Same thing with McCarthy. I mean, it, you look, and Lindsey Graham um, is one of probably one of the people responsible for the uh, the Democrats being more successful than anyone thought, because this dumbass introduced a national abortion ban that allowed Democrats to say, you don't think that Republicans want to push this further? Lindsey Graham just introduced it at, at a federal level. You know, when he did that, <laughs> all I could think of was, dude, are you a sleeper agent or what? Why? Because... Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so it, it's just, I, I can't with Lindsey Graham. And, you know, anyway. I know, I know. Um, can, we, can we talk a little bit more about the... Uh, about the... <laughs> the impending nuptials. <laughs> um, I know. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, Tiffany got married over the weekend, Tiffany yep. Trump. And I, did the, some of those photos and just Trump. What, I, I mean, love how Ivanka edited Kimberly Guilfoyle out of the, <laughs> of the Insta picture. <laughs> what? Strange new respect, Vanky. <laughs> aren't they? Isn't she engaged to Don Jr.? Is that ever happening? Are we ever going to see that? Who knows? Oh. Who, who, who knows? It's but I will say this. The, um, the, the best joke I heard all weekend was Trump gave away two things of this weekend, the Senate <laughs> and <laughs> Tiffany Trump. <laughs> but, well, you know, I think Tiffany Trump may, got the better end of the deal. She married a billionaire. So, <laughs> uh, poor thing. Let's talk a little bit about this, this, this uh, leadership race going on in the House. Yes. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people are wondering, we, we touched on it a little bit, a few minutes ago, but I think it's really important for people to understand some of the dynamics going on here. And, you know, with, you have Elise Stefanik who is standing there with her shitty grin next to McCarthy. McCarthy gives this speech today about how he thinks that, oh, well, you know, maybe if we had uh, stronger candidates as, as governor and senator, things would have been a little bit different, but we're still, you know, we're still going to take over. And, and, you know, they're all just, I, What's going on right now in leadership? I just don't understand why the the, the Senate now they're going to go after you know they're trying to go after McC McConnell also. But all these like this running around for these leadership races, this is not as cut and dry as it as it seems to some people. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene was allegedly whipping votes for McCarthy today. That's not because she loves McCarthy. That's because God knows what part, little piece of McCarthy's there is soul some he still kind has of left. Going on yeah, but whatever with... little piece of soul he still has left, he has sold it to her to right. try to thinking that she's going to support him. That yeah, is she's not thinking happen. I can race ahead of even of even my allies like Gates and become the the most powerful voice next to the throne, and that Kevin McCarthy will not take a dump without her permission at that point. He will not wake up in the morning and get coffee before she says, okay. Yep. I mean, that's where we're headed. That's why I said this just because he won today, it was 188 to 31, I believe. He has 31 members of 31 members of his own caucus, and a lot of them are MAGAs that he has to convince. What is he giving up to them for the, to get them to vote for him? Because he really cannot lose any of them. So you know, it, 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 you're right, Tara. He can't lose, he can't really have a big break. No. And, and look, Kevin's thinking to himself, okay, they had their little show vote. I'm fine. He, that guy is not fine. No. Elise is not, Elise is not missing a beat here. She is creeping up on him. Everybody knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows she'll take it. She came out and endorsed Trump for a very clear reason. Kevin's not going to be down in Mar-a-Lago tonight from what I'm hearing, unless he hopped on a private jet. Um, he's not going to be down there for the, for the event. And Trump is going to take that very, very badly. Yes. Very badly. That's like betrayal. Well, he made he he made Kevin break right after one six. Mm -hmm. He makes Kevin break whenever he wants him to break. He humiliates him because he likes to do it. And and Kevin's position is incredibly tenuous. But you know, he's not the only person in trouble today in a leadership race in Washington, DC. Uh, Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell and Rick Scott. As I tweeted earlier, it's the Gamera versus Voldemort kaiju Harry Potter crossover you never knew you needed. <laughs> um, those Rick Scott has brought it out in the open in the Senate, as you know, is different from the House. Their leadership races are much more low key, much more on the mm -hmm. down low whisper campaign, uh, very quiet in the cloakroom kind of things. Very member. Are they member. are they secret ballot? 
They are a secret ballot. They are a secret ballot, ballot, yeah. You know, I don't know the ways of the Senate. I spent all yes. my time in the House. Um, but but McConnell getting this cross pressure, he's got at least there are at least seven Republican senators right now who are either openly not supporting him or who are saying that we failed. We have to burn down the NRSC and start over. Like Josh this Hawley. is all McConnell's fault. He spent all this money. He didn't get his candidates through. So look, the, 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 the way McConnell cemented his power for folks that are that are watching this again we're going to speak republican for a minute mm -hmm. is after murdoch in missouri 2014 in 2014 yep blew up a, a seat that was a layup frankly claire's mm -hmm. numbers were not great at the time missouri is a red state and and it was trending even more red and it's even trended even more red since then and this guy that got through the MAGA primary, pre-MAGA, but MAGA. Pre-MAGA, yeah. That was Tea Party then. Tea Party, yeah. He got through and Mitch McConnell and, and blew the race. And Mitch McConnell swore a blood oath that never fucking again would the crazies be the ones who got the nominations. Because well, you had two more. You, for, you forgot about the other two. Sharon Angle. Sharon Angle. Nevada and was, you know, yeah. That would have been a winnable race at the time if it had been someone else. And um, Christine O'Donnell, I'm not a witch in Delaware. They, they called me in at one point to to, uh, to to pitch a rescue operation for O'Donnell. And I wrote an ad <laughs> and I went to the meeting and I was like, you can have this. It's okay. Please, with my compliments. But that was 2014 too, wasn't it? It was all the same. That was all that same election cycle. But McConnell swore after that he was right. not going to have any more crazies on the on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And that that made him a very popular legislator, a very popular leader in the Senate. And prolific with, fundraiser. With Yeah. And that helped him with the guys like Thune and Portman and Saxby and Johnny Isaacson yep. and Lindsey and John and a whole bunch of people. They may, they may have never loved him, but they always knew he was going to be stable and yep. he was going to try to cock block all the lunatics you know, that the, the MAGA Tea Party yep. type, pre-MAGA, post-Tea Party types wanted on the ballot. It he was effective it for a while. This year. He but lost this time, the one right. thing he's good at. Right. That's right. That's absolutely right. Well, let me tell you, if this if this had been uh if this had been David McCormick mm -hmm. on the ballot of Pennsylvania, we'd have a Republican center in Pennsylvania. That's correct. If this had been um anybody else except Blake fucking Masters or Adam Laxalt in Arizona and Nevada probably would have been a Republican. Yeah. The crazies got, got put in place because they met the purity test of saying the election was fake, that Trump was still the president, that there's a great conspiracy to steal elections from, from Donald Trump. And the voters just said, no, get the fuck out of here. Right. And, and, the, and Rick Scott was the head of the NRSC. Which is the one hundred and fifty million dollars yeah. went up in flames. In flames now. for them. No one knows. Nineteen million dollars for American Express. Let's get the hell out of here. How I much? Nineteen got those mil damn points. Nineteen million. Million with an Oh M. wow! I want to I know mean, who got those points. Right. Right. I don't know who got those points. I really do. I mean, I'm, well, I'm curious. Who, whoever got them needs to cash them in and go on vacation forever away from politics because they totally blew a, an absolute I don't know. I think Rick Scott should run the NRSC for a thousand yeah. years at this point. I know. Let's keep them there. <laughs> we, but the audacity of these guys, they are the ones that are let, that are like partially responsible for this debacle, sure. thinking that he can challenge Mitch McConnell, turning around like, well, it wasn't my fault. It was McConnell's fault. McConnell's like... I'm not the one who had the, you know, pick these candidates. He's been talking about candidate quality and the lack thereof right. for months now. He knew it. He knew you it. Know, the, the idea, the idea of, of, of Mitch McConnell being the guy who had to come in and, and use the Senate leadership fund instead of the NRSC because Scott had blown everything up. At and Scott end. also did his own agenda. Remember, Rick right. Scott. That never happens. Also, as we continue I, I, to speak exactly. Republicans, and I was just going to say. The, the 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 gift that Rick Scott gave them, aside from burning down all their money, um, was also that he came out and said, "We want to kill Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and raise taxes." You know, as 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 stupid as Trump can be, in 2016, all the other Republicans were like, "I want to reform Social Security. I want to cut right. the." And Trump's like, "No, we're not doing it." You right. know why? He understood who the Republican base voter was. Old people. Old people. Right. They're the ones who vote the most.
uh, and women, by the way, who make up, you know, 52 percent of the electorate this this time around, 52 to 48 percent. There was a considerable gender gap yep. in, in the, the women's vote this time around. And I, I wonder why. Same thing with same thing that happened, like you mentioned, with um, Murdoch in Missouri yep. in that 2014 race. What made him completely implode was his comments about rape. Rape. Okay. He said it was legitimate rape. Legitimate, legitimate rape. rape is different. And the body has a way of shutting that down. Shutting it down. What? Really? Hmm. Yeah. I don't think women voters in Missouri took too kindly to that. You know, and I wrote I was, a piece back then for, um, what was it for ricochet or somewhere like oh that. Oh my gosh. Day, right. And, and I said, you can't put crazies like Murdoch on the ballot. He's insane. He will lose you the race. And if you care about the pro-life cause, you can't have people like that out there. You got to convince people um, that you're not insane. And right. he's insane. Right. And I got so much shit for it at the time. But people were like, well, you know, he he he's a fighter. He speaks the truth. Well, guess what? This time you got a whole bunch of fighters who spoke the truth, like Don Bolduc. Yeah. And and another Luke race, another winning assault. Another winnable race potentially for Republicans if they had sure. a better candidate. I mean, sure. you, you had Chris Sununu, who I who I think is completely out of control. I think he needs to lay off the Adderall. But he Ooh. is oof, he's got a lot going on there. He's he, he's wired tight. Have you seen I, it on TV yes, lately? I said last week on the Sunday show on MSNBC, somebody needs to give him some warm milk and lavender because he was like completely <laughs> all over the place. Hysterical, just hysterical with the both sides is him. Like he doesn't take a breath. He just keeps going right. on and he these nervous smiles and like, like Jesus, dude, take a Take right. a take a breath. It's just TV, bro. I know, but he, you know, he was someone that people were looking at as being um, reasonable. He wasn't, uh, you know, a MAGA crazy. But what his his tactic is both sidesism. He's trying right. to both sides. Well, the other side's just as bad, and that's his way. That's his out. And he yeah. said that he wasn't going to support uh, uh, Boldak at first. But then, guess what? He ended up doing supporting They're him. All They're all so in. full of shit. I mean, it's re it's ridiculous. And you know who? Another one. Our buddy. Um, uh, Susan Collins, she actually campaigned with with Oz, thinking he was going to be a moderate. Susan Collins, the worst. The apps, she is such the worst. You know what? The shit we got from from Republicans mm -hmm. in 2020. It's Trump up here. How dare you run against Trump? How dare you attack Trump? Susan Collins, everybody else. Right. She is the biggest fucking faker. Oh. In the yeah. world, she has yeah. played people for a generation. Yes, that she's a moderate and she's a nice person. And a, why would you go against me? Yeah. But not, I, I thought Brett Kavanaugh was right. very credible. Yeah, and now she's you know she's deeply concerned. Okay, right. yeah, all right. You and you're deeply concerned. You can know where you can take that. Um, yeah. Okay, as we are wrapping up the show today, I want to give you an opportunity to say. Does Trump actually announce tonight, or is it yeah. some kind of is it some kind of you know other no, very 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 probably? Tonight. I think he goes all in tonight. He's afraid of Merrick Garland. He's going to say, uh, you know, once he's a candidate, he'll say they're they 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 want to date me because they know I will win against Sleepy Joe, <laughs> and that, that's he needs the and he needs the juice. He wants the the emotional uh, shot about it. He doesn't want DeSantis to get any more wind under his sails. And and frankly, he wants to start raising some money at a level that he, that you know will make his prior grifts look like like modest panhandling on the side of the street. But here's the thing about that, Rick. If he, he's limited now, if he runs, right there, there his PAC can still run. I can still raise endless amounts of money, but the campaign they have the campaign limits on it. Yeah, but here's the thing: uh, Trump can run outside the system. And and can raise unlimited money as a candidate. Yeah, uh, you know Obama was the one who broke the broke the system. He he ran outside the system for the first time since I guess uh, Ford, um, and, and that's when the system started. Yeah, back in, in the seventies. Um, and, and so, look, I think he and I, I think we all know by now that any dollar raised by any Donald Trump connected entity is rather fungible. Mm. Um, and as long as he gets enough, it gets enough to keep the gas in the jet and his lifestyle going, he's going to be a happy guy. Um, mm -hmm. One know, other, one other thing with that. Yeah. So, so the grift is is continuing. Um, per, Herschel Walker's out here begging for money because now Republicans don't oh, care anymore. This. It's like so ridiculous, <laughs> right? And um, the, the the Herschel Walker campaign 
wrote a letter complaining to the Trump people to say like, hey, um, if you're going to fundraise off of this, let's get it 50-50. They were deceiving people who thought they were sure. giving money to Herschel Walker's efforts, but it was going 90 to 10, 90% to Trump's pockets and only 10% to Herschel Walker. And then when they got called out on it, it, they're like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll adjust it to 50-50. But a bunch of other candidates and other things going on that they were doing fundra joint fundraising with, still 90-10. You know, and once again, this is all run through a system called Win Red. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of consultants in Washington and leaders in Washington, including Ronna McDaniel mm -hmm. and Josh Holmes, who get a cut of every one of those dollars that are spent. And the Win Red system is replete with these scammy kind of email tricks and yep. these behavioral tricks they use in their in their landing page design, et cetera. And it is it is remarkable. I mean, look, when we ask people for money at the Lincoln Project, you can go to lincolnproject.us slash donate. We tell you what it's about. We're going to go yep. run ads in this area. We're going to do activities in this area. We're going to run social in this area. We're going to run digital in that area. Yep. And we did that this year, folks. And we've got an after action report from 2022 that's out today. It's on our it's on our website and it's on our Twitter feed. Uh, and we'll post the link again uh, for everybody uh, at some point tonight uh, of the work we did in 2022. And the success. We were in 22 races of which we won 16, which in politics is a damn good batting average. Yep. And, and we targeted those races because of their consequential nature in the pro-democracy fight. And I got to tell you, it is enormously satisfying to see people like Carrie Lake and Tim Michaels and Dr. Oz go down in flames. It yep. is an enormously satisfying thing. And, and, you know, it's one of the things we were so proud of this year. But I will say this, folks, we have a new project we're launching as well. It's not the Lincoln Project. And I'm, I'm, I'm here on, I'm here on non-Lincoln Project business from this point of the conversation onward. We realized something about the fight. We realized something about where the country's at in this big battle for democracy versus autocracy. And that a super PAC can only do so much. We're a very good super PAC. We're very good at what we do. We're very good with our return on the investment for our donors. And we're able to go out and do things like win those 16 big races this year on a, on a budget that was closer to $20 million than a billion like the other guys <laughs> have. But we've decided that you can't just wage this battle in campaigns. You can't just win it at the ballot box only. It won't work that way. We realized because we, we analyzed it and the, the MAGA media has a gigantic ecosystem. And it's Fox, yes, at the top, but it's Infowars. It's Steve Bannon. It's Ben Shapiro. It's all this crazy stuff that's out there that feeds the audience poison every day. So we're launching a new company called Resolute Square. Uh, our, our first premiere show is tonight. This is the absolute break-in of the, of the network. Um, there'll be a, uh, there'll be a tweet on my account, uh, posted in a few minutes where you can watch. We hope you'll join us over at, over at Resolute. Um, it's going to be a, what we call an in the room strategy session. Uh, Tara is going to host us and it's going to be me and Reed and Stu and Joe and Maya. We're going to have some conversations tonight about what we're about to see with Trump, what we just saw in this election, where we think things are going. These conversations and the products that, 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 Resolute are going to Resolute Squared is going to host include my new podcast, The Enemies List. Which, for those of you who are crossovers, I just can't tell you how grateful I am. We were number two in politics nationally last week for The Enemies List, and I I I'm so grateful. I'm like emotionally grateful, and and number nine overall in news, and number sixty overall in all the damn two million podcasts in America. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But Resolute's going to host my podcast and many others to come. We're going to do live events. We're going to do a newsletter that is going to be going to blow out all this conventional wisdom garbage you get every day that would tell you things like two weeks ago, the Republican red wave is coming. We're going to be very against the conventional grain. And Resolute's going to be a really fun project. Now, you're wondering, how do you do this? Well, we're not the Lincoln Project at Resolute. We've got a lot of Lincoln Project people and friends because it's a mission to have a platform that connects people, that allows creators and activists and, and, and people who believe in this cause to come together. And it allows us to post up against the MAGA media. You know, and listen, when Fox News started, it wasn't Fox News. That's right. It was Roger Ailes pitching a shitty one-hour cable show to Rupert Murdoch. It grew. It got bigger. It got better. It got stronger. 
and in a bad way and with a very dark energy to it. Are we going to take on Fox? You know what? We take on billion dollar campaign operations on 15 million bucks a year. Guess what? We'll try to take them on. You guys come with us, sign up. You'll see a lot of our cool stuff that's going to happen. We really want to get you involved with Resolute Square. We think it is going to be a, a culture side and, a, and, a, and, a, and an idea side of this fight that a super PAC alone can't do. Thanks yep. for everything, folks. Uh, and I'm going to post that tweet in just about one minute um, yep. where you can tune in to see us at eight o'clock. That's right. On ResoluteSquare.com. And then Resolute Square has all of its own social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook yep. channels as well. So all follow, right. like, subscribe, all the things. Yes. <laughs> Come join us over at the strategy call at 8 p.m. on ResoluteSquare.com. All right, you guys, we will see you back here on Thursday. Good night. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>